guys, and welcome back to another episode of Frozen Fortunes. Now, we're going to start off on the finance screen today. I did actually show this uh, in, I think, the previous episode or the one before that, but I had to cut it out for time-saving uh, sakes, which is a bit of a problem, but just one of those things. I still end up cutting out, like, seven or eight minutes worth of me actually talking about useful things in each episode. Otherwise, that'd be, like, half an hour plus, and I just can't be doing that. But we have 17,000 pounds, uh, 17,000, 17 million pounds in the bank. We are about as financially solvent as you could possibly be right now. Transfer budget is still pretty low um, because, of course, the board haven't taken into account that money. But next year, I think we should have a nice transfer fund of maybe about five million pounds, particularly if we get back into the Champions League again. So that's looking relatively nice, uh, which means I can go for the full scouting uh, packages next year, which is going to be tasty. Also, at the end of this season, I'm planning to do a special video uh, separate to the other ones, which is like 10 years into the save, where we'll go and have a look around the other leagues and do a bit of snooping. A few of you have requested this, but I didn't want to put it in one of the analysis videos because it's not really analysis. So we'll do it at the end of this season because it is the 10th year in the save. So that'll be something extra to look forward to. Don't know where that video is going to slot in, but don't worry, we'll find somewhere to put it. The board have agreed to upgrade our youth facilities and it's going to cost us £650,000. But hey, we've got plenty of money in the bank for that. And also, I've taken Renato Busso on trial. Weirdly, he was allowed to come on trial with us for four weeks. So he is currently at the club, but he still won't sign for us. Um, so it, it's a weird situation that they would let him come and he would come, but still won't sign for us. I don't know. We've got a couple of games off camera before the doubleheader against PSG. Our first game was at home against Esbio, one of our rivals towards the top of the league, and we were able to get a very comfortable win, really. Uh, on terms of the stats, anyway, Svenningsen's goal was the difference in the end. They played a kind of weird system we hadn't really got used to, but I think on another day we could have had three or four goals. Just the one on the night, though, but that's all we needed. Also worth noting, though, a former player of ours, Massimiliano Ponzio, actually started for Esbio in that game. He's been bouncing around a lot, but he's found himself a place in the top flight. Next up, we were at home, uh, sorry, away at Bromby, took a lead early on through Mark Yakim, obviously. We then went to do the whole counter-attacking thing, but it didn't really work as well against Bromby. They got an equaliser through Daniel Christensen, but thankfully, Johnny Eya, the Eya and Yakim league partnership has been truly excellent, popping up and giving us the win. So another, we've won 11 of our 12 league games so far this year, and it is looking good for us in the league. And here is how the league is looking. We're currently sitting seven points clear at the top after 12 games, vastly better goal difference, just the one defeat so far. There's like a pack of three emerging underneath that with Copenhagen, Lingby and Esbjerg, and then a six-point gap back to AGF and Allborg and all those sort of teams. Midgeland really off the pace. Horsens, despite conceding loads of goals, are at least doing better than Randers, who, despite Franco Budimir, as far as I know, still being there, have not won a game in their first 12. I just want to check if he's even still there. Yep, he is still there, so I do not know what is going on at Randers. Couple of little other bits. Uh, I've signed up this guy, Medi Kuja. He came through. Now, he's a complete forward, which means he's got a few little extra little bits and bobs around him. He's cost us £250,000, which I thought was all right, really, when you consider him. He's young. He isn't going to be on super loads of money. He's a decent player that will slot right in and give us a little bit of extra cover in those striker positions. I thought for 250k, I couldn't really go wrong. Also, Oli Ikkonen and Matthew Patton Kavanagh. You wouldn't have heard of him. He's a right back we have ages, uh, but he's been out alone the entire time. He made his debut for Cyprus of all places, and Ikkonen made his international debut for Canada. So that's nice to have a few of those. And Svenny and Chowie actually played against each other in an international friendly between Denmark and Algeria. So that must have been a crunch one. I thought we'd just take a quick look at Johnny Eyre, since he is our top goal scorer in the league. He started six games and he scored six goals. You can't really argue with the return. We've got a lot out of this guy. Considering he didn't cost us a penny, this six foot six lad has done absolute wonders for us in the two seasons he's been here. He's been the ultimate backup player. He's worth £375,000 now. That's insane. Um, wanted by Silkeborg. If we can move this lad on for like half a million at some point, if we do get the chance, I wouldn't be too bothered about that. That would be a hell of a deal for us. Still got a little bit more potential there as well. I don't know what's happening with that. Anyway, it's time for the big stuff. It's away against Paris Saint-Germain. I'm more interested, in all honesty, in the Fiorentina Bayern Munich game. I feel like we probably will lose this game. And that's fine, you know? Uh, we weren't expecting to. I'm more interested in what happens in the other one. A draw would be quite tasty for us, given a chance of getting second in this group. Um... Third is the minimum we expect from this group now. I think if we can just get a win against Fiorentina at home, that'll pretty much wrap that up. But we'll see. You might notice, in the, remember in the last episode, Leva picked up an injury. Unfortunately, it was a groin strain. That's four to five weeks he's going to be out, and he's still out, unfortunately. So, ooh, do we give a try to Cravinios? Since he's played pretty well in the games he's played, although he did play in the last game. Then again, so did Safi. Whoever we bring in would have done. So that's the team for today. Shishi will, of course, be moved back. I should. I might have to make that like a personalized tactic for Juan Shishi uh, to prevent me having to do this every time. Bravo, Svenningsen, Akinola's back, baby. Shishi, Zayem, Chawi, Curtin, Rocco, Cravinios, Roger Jr., Amoa, and on the bench. Niang, Moskutsa, Santos, Yakim, Safi, Surgord, and of course, Johnny Iya. Now, let's see what tactic they're playing. This is going to be interesting. If they're playing that tactic, we might have a chance. Uh, they kind of they kind of are, but they're kind of not. 
It might still work. We'll give it a crack. Um, Velasquez is the man we're going to have to mark up. They've got Ombolo, Dembele, Crotrone. Um, This is quite a good team. Rugani, Rajkovic, Kimpembe. Oh, dear. Oh, and by the way, Pep Guardiola's managing them too. So just to make things easier for us, of course. Okay, that's what we're going to go with for now. I'm tempted, you know, to just go straight onto counter and put our thing on, um, look for the overlap from the beginning. Because I, I just think against a team like PSG, we might as well just try and be a counter-attack inside from the beginning. That, that's the best I can think of. Obviously, the mentality part's a little bit, but it's, it's still not bad, is it, really? I don't know why that changes that stuff, but um, let's get into this, I guess. So, question of the day. And today's question is this. What is the most dominant game you've played on FM? I chose this one specifically because my answer is the last episode, B67-7, Bayern Munich 1. Easily the best game of FM I've ever played. Um, just in... Oh, my God. I thought we were going to concede already there. Bravo. Svenningson, that's surely offside against Svenningson. But yeah, that's probably easily it for me. What is your most dominant game? Not so much biggest win, but most dominant game. Let me know in the comments. And if you have any ideas for a question today, drop those in the comments as well with the hashtag QOTD as him or puts it around the post. Keeping an eye out really for the Fiorentina Bayern Munich score is that I'm going to have one eye on that. I, I think that this is probably a game that we'll struggle to get anything from. And we have to, oh my God, Vasquez there. Cutrone cleared away. The Awara, this is going to be a difficult ass game for us, Velasquez. But you never know. With the counter-attacking play that we exhibited against Bayern, there's always a chance. And Moa with the big save. God, they are getting a lot of corners, a, a lot of set-piece situations. Um, but we have won all the headers from those positions so far. Headed away. Where's the ball? Where's the ball? Oh my goodness, this is going to be a tough old afternoon, I sense. Hmm, I'm tempted to go close down less. Oh, not close down less, but close down sometimes. Look at Dembele here. Oh, good lord. Catrone blocked. Long balls forward. I don't know. I don't really want to be a long ball team today. However, I am tempted to... Just put that down to sometimes on the old closing down. Just to try and hold our shape a little bit better than we have done in the opening sort of 17 minutes. Every single highlight so far has been PSG attacking us. To give you an idea of the dominance they're exerting in this game as Catron puts it around the post. Fullback's out of position. Catron's in and he's hit the post. That probably should have been 1-0 to, uh, to PSG there. Still 0-0 in the other game too. The fullbacks have not had the best day so far. I might even... Fiorentina 1, Bayern Munich 0. I mean, what is going on in Germany? Uh, not really what I wanted to see, actually. I would have preferred the draw in that game, to be honest. But, hey, it gives us a damn good shot at getting that third spot. Uh, maybe even higher, actually, because we've got to play Fiorentina again. We already beat them once. Dembele over the bar again. We'll get to half time. We can reassess this. Well, half time, and we are royally parking the bus at the moment, and I'm fine with that. Um, might actually push our fullbacks back into the older slots, deeper in the pitch, just to give them a bit more of a chance. Right, changes are afoot. What do we fancy? I kind of fancy Johnny Eya, just for something a little bit different. It's because it's a totally different option in the pitch. I'm going to move Chowie as well over to Rogers Jr.'s... Wait, what? Hang on. Why is he now on a 7.7? .7? He was on a 7.6.1 before. Okay. In that case, Chowie's going to come off and Moskutz is going to come on in that spot there. And we'll probably just leave it at that for now. But I want to give Johnny Eya a chance to just, I don't know, win some headers against them a little bit. Might give us a chance to hold the ball up a tiny bit more than we are. Velasquez, look at the amount of players they've got forward. Dembele. And Neymar scores. I think I feel like he's only just come off the off the bench, though. PSG won B60. And they deserve the lead, unfortunately. Uh, we, we've not been good enough on the night from an attacking point of view. We might have to go a bit more long ball or something. I, I don't know. Um, get the goalkeeper to distribute up to Johnny E. See if we can't find something. Good ball in. And Neymar's header. Ah, it was always going to be tough, weren't it? Losing all three Champions League games and conceding the number of goals that they are. I wouldn't be surprised if Fiorentina grabbed another one before the day is done. Good throw, and that's a penalty as well now. Um, not what we needed there. Rocco's really screwed us because we're going to be 2-0 down at this point. Not ideal. Neymar to step up and take. And Neymar makes it 2-0. He's been on the pitch a matter of minutes and he's already made it 2-0. I think they might have rested some players against us too. Uh, looking at some of the players that have come on the pitch. It's now 2-0 to PSG. Um, what a strike from Neymar. Still playing. I think he's like 34 now or something. Going to get Yakim on for Sven, uh, Svenningsen as well. Give him 12 minutes run out against Paris Saint-Germain as well. Right, go on. Kravinius looking long. Ia, can he square it for Svenningsen? He must do. He does! It's 2-1 with 12 minutes to go. Jonas Svenningsen has got a goal back. God, his Champions League goal scoring record is a, just unbelievable. Um, great work here. Shishi doesn't actually win the header, but Kravinius finally plays one over the top like I've been asking for a while now. Ia gets into the good spot, plays a beautiful ball across the box, and Svenningsen's in there. I might actually leave Svenningsen on now. Though. He's got a goal. He's got a bit of confidence. Uh, if it says... Yeah, we're going to cancel that change. Uh-oh. Neymar's corner. Headed away. Okay, five minutes on the clock. Oh my god, Bayern have equalised against Valencia. They've finally woken up. Somebody's finally woken up Bayern Munich. Took them long enough. Right, Ia. Can he... Oh god, Rugani's in there. Can he win the ball off him though, maybe? Himmelman. 
the Awara, lots of space out wide. Neymar they've gone to instead, though. The lot round the post. That's actually a good result for us, really, when you think about our chances of getting second. A draw there helps us out greatly, uh, as it basically takes two points off of both the teams. The lot. Ball in. Oh, Neymar again. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Diawara's through. And it is now 3-1 to PSG. We had to go for it at that point. Um, we only had one real shot at going for this game when we got that late goal from Svenning, and we needed to try and get the, the equaliser. God, they've, got, they've pushed forward a lot, actually, in the last stages of this game, surprisingly. Sergi Sampa. Diawara. Neymar. Achebel. Around the corner for Neymar. Don't concede another penalty, lads. Oh, and it's another one. David Neres. I, I think, yeah, leaving it on this after we just conceded that goal was a bit of a, a downward, but I, I don't think it really matters at this point. It's a shame, though. 4-1 defeat to PSG, likely to be on the cards here. They've scored two little bursts of goals against us, basically. That's it, but they, they've been vastly better than us on the night, and that's the gap between us and the very top teams in Europe. We still have a long way to go. It's as simple as that. Right, we've got a couple of games off camera, and then we're going to come back for the second leg, at, well, if you like, at home. Maybe we can do something about them in the icy depths of Greenland. You never know. So, we've had a few games off camera, the first of which was at home in what I thought would be a very easy game against AC Horsens, and really it should have been. We were the better side on the night and created much more chances than them, but it just wasn't to be. Uh, Ivan Peric, remember him, he's on loan from Reading at AC Horsens. He's a former player of ours, and he came back to haunt us massively here by scoring twice. He gave him the lead, Yakim equalised for us. They then went back in front before Svenningsen uh, then came off the bench and grabbed us a late equaliser, but really we should have won the game, and it's disappointing to drop points in fashion like this. However, because it was a fan day, it boosted the attendance. We have 5,000 people in the ground for a game against AC Horsens. Next up, though, the first team squad did do their job in the cup. Since the way the games have fell, yet again, the first team squad ended up playing the cup game. And Randers really do struggle at the moment. They've got no wins in the league. And, uh, well, they're out of the cup as well now. Sani Akinola's early goal provided by Jonas Fenningsen. Uh, he then added one himself thanks to a wonderful back heel from, uh, from Zayem. And then he scored a penalty to round off his day with a 9.3 rating, two goals and an assist. Svenningsen is on fire at the moment. But to give you an idea of just how much he's on fire, he's now worth 2.8 million. But also looking at his stats down here, which is the important part, in 14 competitive games started, so that's just the league, the cup, and the Champions League, and six substitute appearances, he has 20 goals and 12 assists. The guy is an absolute beast at the moment, and still only 19 years old, just waiting on that first Denmark cap, uh, Denmark goal, rather. And finally, it was up to our B teamer, so to speak, to get one over the line against Kyrgyz. We played well enough on the night. Um, just, it wasn't the most emphatic of performances, and it was Peter Surgord's wonderful strike from just inside the edge of the area, putting one in the far corner that saved us and bailed us out. And Surgord, he's got a few of these man-of-the-match performances in the league. He genuinely could, and I'm really glad to have a second player joining Svenningsen that could potentially be, like, first-team quality in a couple of years. And regardless, he's going to get tons of game time because of us playing in the Champions League and the league. At the same time, we're playing so many players, and everybody's getting good game time, which is enabling us to develop a lot of players. We've basically got two full teams at the moment. It's great. In case you were curious, the league looks like this. We're five points clear at the moment. Copenhagen and Lingby starting to pull away from Esbjerg again. Um, we're in a safe position, but we're still not as far clear as I'd like. We got two million for being top after match day 13. So there's that. Now, today we face off against PSG. Now, for some reason, some of the games are kicking off at six o'clock. I don't know if this is a new thing the Champions League are going to do in a few years, because the Bayern Fiorentina game kicked off at six o'clock and they won 3-1, which means that technically... Um, it's not really what I wanted, really. Uh, but there you go. So Bayern Munich clearly are back a little bit. They seem to rediscover themselves midway through the game against Fiorentina. And now they seem to be back on form. So the chances of us getting second in this group are still a bit slim. But if we were to get something tonight, things could change. Because we've still got to play Bayern and Fiorentina in the next episode. And that could... Well, I mean, actually, a point tonight would pretty much eliminate Fiorentina and we'd get third spot. But hey, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it because I think it's going to be difficult to get anything tonight. So first string, uh, unfortunately, Curtin is suspended, which is a pain in the bottom. But Cravinius will come in and do his job. Chowie is able to play, but he does have a broken nose. Um, he's wearing protection, so we can start him, but he might not be able to complete the game. And unfortunately, because of that, Rogers Jr. had to play the full game last time. So our wingbacks could be a little bit on the knackered side. Shishi will, of course, move him back to his normal position of attacking midfielder. And there's your squad. Let's get the bench sorted. On the bench, Niang, Seifi Santos, Yakin Moskutsa, Sugod, and Johnny Ia. Right, opposition reports. I'm guessing it's the same type of system. Yeah. We'll mark up Diawara. No, wait. They're playing this. Ah, okay. There might be a chance here. I'm still going to do what we did, where it's counter-attacking, wing-backs and whatnot. But Neymar is starting, so we're going to go with marking up Diawara and we'll do some stuff with the wingers as well. Right, so what was it we do? We go look for the overlap. I'm going to start off on counter. I wouldn't normally do this in these games unless we're winning, but against a team like PSG, I feel like it, they're going to come onto us from the beginning anyway. So it might be sensible to try that out. Let's go. 
I'm still not confident we'll get anything from this game, but at least they're playing a system that I know for a fact is going to provide us with a few chances or two in this match, I'd like to think anyway. And you never know what we can do. We were a bit embarrassed towards the end of the game against PSG in the last match, but that's mainly because I threw it forward once they gave us that glimmer of hope towards the end, you know. Himmelman, edge of the box, around the post, that's fine. It's not been a strong start from us, but we got through the first few minutes of the game. That's the key thing. Rogers Jr. Bravo. Rogers Jr. Can he find a... Oh. They're just that little bit better than everyone we've ever played in this safe, basically. Rogers Jr. Svenningsen. Oh, Shishi. Bravo's through. Can he square it? Oh, we've got a shot on target from a good position. And Mariano Bravo with the shot. I'm counting shots now as good things. Just nice to see us create something. We look a little bit more comfortable than we did in the first leg, which is nice. Probably end up losing it 6-0 now that I've said that. Laver. Oh, that's poor. Oh, we've got to use Chowie out wide. Please use him. There we go. Get some good balls in, Carradine. The injury does worry me a little bit, but it is only a nose injury, so it shouldn't really affect him too much. Bravo, through. That's surely offside. That has to be offside, and that's surely... Yep, that's disallowed. But Bravo is already threatening. That's two good chances he's had so far. Oh, we can actually have a little look at this. Yes, he is most definitely offside, you'd have to say. Uh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> What's he doing? I'm kind of content to just sit. Uh, we've actually had the better of the last sort of five, ten minutes of the play, which is nice. Possession's coming down a lot, actually. Uh-oh. Uh here we go. Embola bringing it forward for PSG. Cut out by Zayem. Brilliant stuff. Rocco. Cravinhos. This is better. We're actually looking a bit more comfortable. Ball over the top. Svenningsen's through. Can he get a... He's in. Oh, what a chance that was. The Svenningsen against Bayern would have put that in the back of the net. We've actually started this game really well. Svenningsen's through again. Can he take his man on? He's got men at the back post. Ball in. Akinola, 1-0. B67-1. Paris Saint-Germain, nil. Read that correctly. This one means more than the Bayern one in some ways, considering we lost the first leg 4-1. Was that Jonas Svenningsen with another assist as well? Svenningsen brings it to the bottom, not to the byline, just whips that across and Akinola's header. It's 1-0 B67. Can you bloody believe it? I suppose the question is, what do we do now? Um, this would be enough to guarantee us third spot in the group, which is super, super important. And it's an Emmanuel Amoa own goal. What a way to be leveled against. Um, we've, oh God, there's me talking about how it could, hey, we've, we've certainly looked a lot better. I don't think this game is over yet. That is so unfortunate. Uh, it's a good header from Catrone, but uh, it's come off the crossbar and hit the goalkeeper on the floor and gone in. It happens in real life all the time. Well, not all the time, but it does happen. It's unfortunate that this happened then, but we've got more. I feel like we've got more in the tank. We're not done yet. Rocco, over the top, bravo. He's got Svenningsen at the back post. Can he find him? Ball across. Oh, I, I can see what he was trying to do. He just took one more touch than he needed. We're actually matching PSG today, I'd say. Uh, our player has been equally as good as theirs. Velasquez, man, on the edge of the box. lot and saved by Amora again. Okay, this is starting to get a bit more um, one-way traffic. That equaliser has really been like a shock to the system. We were playing really well before the equaliser, and now we just seem to have lost the plot. Neymar! And what a save. Uh, what? Oh, you're having a laugh. The perfect save from Amora, but... Ah, oh, I don't even know what happened there. Um, PSG have turned it around on us. We started strongly, but they've really imposed themselves on us now. So, a fantastic initial stop. How has he got that in from that angle? It is Neymar, I suppose. It's 2-1 to PSG. Oh, God. Rogers Jr. isn't having the best day of his life at the moment. Um, he's had a couple of... Po oh, God. Catron's through. And what is the goalkeeper doing? He almost left a huge gap there. Like, just so he could slide that in, it is now 4, uh, sorry, 3-1 to PSG on the night, and they've completely turned the screw now. But I don't understand what the goalkeeper is doing here. He sort of, he, he, it's like he's saying, please score. I, I don't get that at all. It's now 3-1 to Paris Saint-Germain, and my initial excitement has very much turned to despair at the moment. But again, they are a cut above, massively above us in every possible way. Bravo, here we go again. Can he get through? Square it, please square it. But, oh, for goodness sake, the chances have been there for us. We could have had goals too in this game. I'm not sure really what to make of that first half. It seemed, we took the lead, we played, they've started off well, we then started off very, very well. But that own, that own goal just completely killed us. And in the space of 14 minutes, we can see three goals, then start to look a bit better. And, ah, it's, you could feel there's something there, maybe. Uh, oh, God. Jonas Fenderson has taken a knock and is indicating that he wants to come off. It could be a pulled hamstring. That's still a couple of weeks. We're getting him off immediately because I cannot even begin to risk the idea of spending some missing the games against Bayern and Fiorentina. Over the top for Bravo, right? Yakim's going to get there. Bravo's going to shoot himself, of course. I, what is that? 
I mean, it's a goal. I just don't understand how that's even happened. What is Bravo doing? Is he doing trick shots now? Mike, this isn't dude perfect. That is something quite special that Bravo's just pulled off, but I don't know why. He gets into this position and just plays it across the box for some reason. Chow with a wonderful first touch, ball in, and Bravo's header looping back across the goalkeeper. It's 3-2. Maybe there is still something in this game for us. We've played very, very well on the night. I'm impressed. Right, another change. Chow is looking so knackered. I think Moskutsa would be a good player to bring on right about now. And Zayev is actually looking a bit nervous, but we don't really have any options in that position. Um, I'm going to get Peter Surgord on, but we are going to play him as an attacking midfielder, I think, on attack, just so that he fulfills the role that Shishi's playing tonight, because it seems to be working. Can he win the... Oh, edge of the box. Probably just going to be a long shot in the end, I would suggest. Here we go. Rogers... Ah. That's actually a really nice pass. This is... so. Oh my God, Mark Yakim's in. One touch. Can he finish? He bloody well has. It's B oh, B67-3. Paris Saint-Germain 3. We've come from two goals down at home to Paris Saint-Germain, and now it's 3-3 on the night. We are giving ourselves one hell of a chance at going through. I'll tell you what. There has to be something about playing at home uh, in Greenland against this team. What about this from Mark Yakim as well? Been the man in the league, but what about that for a finish against one of the best teams in the world? Three all, and there's still 25 minutes for us to turn this around even further. Come on. And it's one by Yakim in the midfield. Akinola, he's got Bravo through. Oh, he's got no options. One of those Peter Sorgard of all people. Oh, imagine if Peter Sorgard had scored the goal that won a game against PSG. That would have been something else. Still 10 minutes. This could go either way here. A draw I would settle for happily, but this could easily have any number of outcomes. Well, one of three. <laughs> so, yeah, Akinola over the top for Mark Yakim again. Can he get through? He's through. Oh, dear. He's pulled his shot a little bit wide. We've played so well on the night and thoroughly deserved the point out of this game. The chance creation has been excellent. They've had more shots, but we've had better chances. Yakim. Akinola. Sergon. Look at the space. Bravo is over the top and he's going to get there, you know. Bravo is through. Can he take a touch? Oh, my God. The chances have come and gone. This could... Over the top for Bravo. One touch. And he's done it again. Surely. Yes! PSG. Wow. B67-3. Paris Saint-Germain-3. We probably should have won on the night, but that is some excellent football. Great performance and really, really pleased with that. Wow, what an absolutely massive result that is for us. Nicking a little point there is so important. Uh, Svenningsen's injury could be a worry. Let's go check on that, though. 12 days to three weeks uh, with the physio 12 to 14 days. So basically two weeks out. I think he'll be back for the next uh, Champions League matches, which is the most important thing right now. His safety. Oh, we got 445 grand for that. Oh, by the way, we also beat PSG 5-0 with our under-19s. Uh, still only third in the group, but hey, that's a great result. Fagner is also back in training because he played in that game. So next episode, you know what's about to happen. Off camera, we've got Silkebot away and AGF away in the league. But the main reason, we've got Bayern Munich away and then that Fiorentina home game could really decide it all. I think that a win in the final game could see us qualify for the next round of the Champions League. I think we've pretty much wrapped up third spot as it is because Fiorentina still have to play PSG. Um, that is going to be crazy difficult. Anyway... If you have enjoyed this episode, and I hope you have, we got a three-all draw with Paris Saint-Germain in front of 10,000 people in Greenland. That is insane. Then drop a like on the video. That would be amazing. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for more videos like this in your inbox every single Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And I'll see you in the next episode when I hopefully won't be quite sweating as much. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.